I've never really not sculpted. I think so from a very early age, I was very into art and drawing and painting. Um, and as soon as I could get hold of uh, plasticine or modeling clay, then I was really happy making characters and making worlds. Um, so I suppose really from about the age of four, I probably discovered modeling clay. And then I've really kind of never really left it alone since. Um, I think at home, I wasn't really allowed to play with it because it would get into the carpet. And, you know, so, uh, so it was always very much a school thing or an art club thing. But I've never really left it alone. And even going into um, after school and going into kind of looking as to what to do at university, I was looking at model making and uh, product design, actually. So toy design um, and again, playing with clay and making things. And then there was an after hours film club um, with an artist, a video artist. And this is early 90s. And he taught me a little bit about animation and the options and then said to me, you know, you can study animation. Um, so you could literally have a Mickey Mouse degree. And I thought, amazing, why would I do, why would I do anything else? The real advantages of working with modeling clay um, is it's really versatile. Um, it can take pretty much any shape. You can push textures into the clay. Um, it's kind of strong enough to stand on its own, but will also take a skeleton for movement. Um, it's, you can blend colors very easily, so you can mix the black and the white to make grays and mix all sorts of different colors. So you can make a whole rainbow of colors. And also that it's easily available in shops. So any art shop or most schools will have this clay. So every child and adult will have, um, you know, have played with this at some point. So it makes it really accessible to the public to say that, you know, with this clay and with a camera or a phone, you could make your own animations. Disadvantages are, as you can see with this, it can be very soft. And um, so that's why we sometimes need a, a skeleton or an armature inside to support the puppet. Um, and also is that when you push it and move it, those 25 times a second, it gets very squashed as well. So you're trying to re-sculpt and kind of reform the the shape as you're going along. So if you have a heavily textured character, like Wallace with a you know with his tank top with a vest, um, you couldn't really make that in clay. So we use lots of other materials alongside the modeling clay to, to help us make the films. The process really of creating a character for us often starts with uh, with a design or a drawing um, from the director or or whoever the agency that comes to us. Um, and then we'll work from that. But sometimes there isn't a, a definite style or a definite idea of what they want. So sometimes people will say to me, they can say, Jim, can you make me a funny dog or you know, a bird to sit in a tree? Um, and we need it really quickly. So can you just make something? And because you have a bit of knowledge of the style of the show you're working in, then you can just get the clay out and push it around and make something pretty quickly, you know, within an hour, a couple of hours maybe for a smaller character, you can make something quite uh, quite quickly. So generally it starts with a drawing, but sometimes we draw with this and bash out lots of different versions of something to find a character. And translating from 2D to the 3D world doesn't always translate that well. So I think you can cheat a lot with 2D, cheat perspective, and angles and if something's a bit difficult you can kind of make it a little bit sketchy whereas there's nowhere to hide with the clay it is what it is and you have to make it work as well i like both techniques actually so i like working from a design if it's a really strong design that i like um, and a world that i know then um, then there's something really nice about translating that beautiful drawing into a 3d object and then other times there is a real spontaneity and you get happy accidents by just getting the clay and squashing it. Oh, there we go. There's something interesting in that that you might not have got if you'd gone through the more formal design process. So both have their um, have their kind of pros and cons, really. 
Um, so some is more creative, the, the just pushing the clay is more creative, but you can still get a little bit of your own identity and your own personality, even from a design process as well. I take um, inspiration from all sorts of things. So from watching other people's animations, um, some of my childhood heroes in animation and film I now work with. Um, so I get to work with my childhood heroes and that's quite an amazing thing to, to do that and then drives you on to create your own things. And then other times it's just interests and passions that you have outside. So I have um, a real passion for, for wildlife and nature. So I sculpt natural forms and animals and doing things like creature comforts and Shaun the Sheep. I'm happy making funny animals all day. It's quite exciting, the whole new world of, of platforms to actually get your animations and films. You're not restricted by terrestrial channels or what, um, you know, the kind of uh, satellite and cable companies can provide. The likes of Netflix and the likes of um, Amazon and, and other, you know, other platforms just increase your audience, really. Um, people are much more selective about what they watch these days. They don't just put up with what is offered to them, so they go and actively search things out. And I think certainly for us, although budgets have plummeted in some ways, they've come right down, the variety of platforms and the availability of people willing to make animation now um, is kind of expanding rapidly and people need content and channels and content providers need content. So we're in a kind of I suppose a brave new world really of seeing where it will go and quite how you monetize that and quite how they make their money back is their problem. But if they're willing to put money into these things and produce, um, produce content, then, you know, we're never going to say no, I don't want to make it. If anybody will allow us to make our animations and um, give us a platform to do that, then we're always going to say yes. Yeah. The films are the project I'm most proud of working on. Um, I think probably internationally, I think it would probably be uh, Wallace and Gromit. Um, and you know, as a child growing up with that, was absolutely thrilled to then find myself working with Nick Park and Peter Lord and Dave Sproxton um, and making those characters and making those films. And also Shaun the Sheep comes into that because it's the same world and it's an ex kind of an expanded universe. So um, I've got a deep, love of working with Sean and we've spent a lot of time you know over 200 episodes of Sean that I've been involved with and the feature film so um so I think they're kind of rolled into one really so yeah most Hardman films are great but the Wallace and Gromit and the Sean the Sheep World are, are kind of a deep love I think the beauty of animation is that it speaks to to everyone so we grow up with cartoons um but often adults are watching at the same time or there's a lot of repetition so things are played over and over again um, and I think there's a great artistry so an adult can appreciate the drawings or the sculpture and the process that goes into it children often are much more surface or certainly when young much younger um, and just like the, the characters and the zaniness of it um, whereas you as you grow a little older you know about the craft and you kind of appreciate this good storytelling as well. So I think it spans the, you know, the ages really from, from very small to, to, you know, to your final days really. Everybody can watch animation and get something out of it.